Steve Lieberman is a Jewish American punk rock singer, musician, composer and producer residing in Freeport, New York. Considered an outsider musician, walking the line between insanity and genius, sick, partially attributed to his lifelong struggle with bipolar disorder, he has released 21 CDs and has shared the stage with Weezer, Andrew W.K., Glass Jaw, Ryan Dunn and the Misfits before retiring from performing in December 2011 to battle accelerated phase bone marrow cancer. In 2009, Lieberman signed a multi-album deal with Jewish indie label JDUB Records, taking the place of Mattis Yahoo on their artist roster. As of the spring of 2011, Lieberman, a town controller by trade, was the world a Euro unregistered trademark s only orthodox Jewish heavy metal musician with a record deal, according to Newsday. Lieberman's 2010 song No Festival of Lights has received honorable mention placement in the Song of the Year award as well as airplay on Rich Russo's Anything Anything with Rich Russo radio show on New York City WRXP 101.9 commercial rock radio. Steve Lieberman was the subject of two three-hour-long radio specials on Stony Brook University Radio WUSB, one in 2009, and one in 2008 after the release of his Psych Ward album. Additionally, two of his recent songs, I'm Not a White Boy, and Obama Rama, yeah, both held the number one spot on the SoundClick Global Alternative Genre chart. In the spring of 2013, as his cancer progressed to myelofibrosis leukemia, Lieberman took the now obscure biblical Nazareth vow for life. In the fall of that year, he had announced plans for a final album to be called Cancer Ward to be released sometime in 2014. It will be a concept album, dealing with Lieberman's six-month-long chemotherapy treatment at Memorial Sloan Kettering, the third consecutive course of treatment which failed to suppress his disease's progression. The repeating theme of cancer ward is Steve Lieberman, living on borrowed time with a resistant uncurable cancer, while always contemplating his imminent, early demise. Life and Career, 1958 to Euro 1991 The Early Years, Steve Lieberman was born on June 21, 1958 in Brooklyn, New York to a working-class Jewish family. At the time of his bar mitzvah in 1971, Lieberman, already an observant Jew, acquired a bass guitar to fill a vacancy in his junior high school jazz band. He picked up the instrument and started playing it upside down and backwards. After passing the jazz band audition, he had developed a crude system of chords for the bass. When properly distorted, they mimicked the major chords of the six-string guitar. Forgoing this method for more conventional bass playing, Lieberman became the bassist for hard rock as well as jazz rock fusion bands throughout high school. During this time, he suffered from major depressive disorder and committed para-suicide at age 17. Amidst episodes of depression and mania, Lieberman graduated from college in 1980 with a BBA in accounting where he worked his way up to become town controller by 1998, a position he still holds. He was on hiatus from music through much of the 1980s except for recording a vinyl single Nuclear Blitz in 1984, playing all the chords and leads on the bass guitar. Lieberman was married four times and divorced three times by his 33rd birthday. 1991 Euro 1994 The Underground Cassette Trade he planned to return to music briefly in the spring of 1991, to commemorate his 20th year of playing the bass, this time accompanying himself with a used Yamaha DD6 drum machine. By year's end he recorded a 13-track cassette called Bang the Bass Bot Mania. Overdubbing tracks by using two portable cassette players, Lieberman started writing and recording bass-only crude punk hardcore music. There was a free paper in the New York area at the time called the Musicians Exchange that would review Lieberman's cassettes and those of like-minded musicians in a column called Independence Day. This resulted in trading tapes amongst the musicians and circulating them throughout the underground. Lieberman recorded under the Bop Bop Bigger Babel moniker from 1991 to 2001. 1994 a Euro 2001 entered the gangster rabbi stage left. In 1994, Steve Lieberman began to study the Bible continually, as he did in the years following his bar mitzvah. This time, he realized discrepancies between the word in the Bible and the way modern Judaism is practiced. 
An example of this is that the modern Jewish calendar, besides having its months named after Babylonian gods violates a commandment given in Exodus 12-1, where the new year must be celebrated on the new moon directly preceding Passover, so why do 10 million Jews disobey God by celebrating Rosh Hashanah in the seventh month? After confronting a rabbi with this question after he performed a grave unveiling ceremony, and the rabbi was unable to answer, Lieberman recorded his 20th tape entitled Gangster Rabbi, the title track becoming his theme song and stage name a Euro, because he likes to pick theological fights with actual rabbis. His biblical studies caused Lieberman to break off from existing Jewish sects to found the Bad Linnaim sect in 1995 where precepts include fasting, continual prayer, vegetarianism, and belief in only the Bible is the law, so that God's word is not superseded by that of the Talmud and other rabbinical writings. Additionally, he replaced the calendar from the current system, in the 58th century, to a more appropriate system, being in the 35th century, commemorating the exodus from Egypt. Packaging a live cassette from a first night festival on New Year's Eve 1994 as Mission of Tolerance 5755 Live. The Musicians Exchange's head writer Paul Insiniti said of Lieberman's show, based on the sound of the screaming crowd, Lieberman should tour and call no sleep to Gaza. He is every skinhead's nightmare. 2001 Ashes of Badalania, after the release of his 36th cassette, Diaspora Blaster 36 in the spring of 2001, Steve Lieberman's house and studio were completely destroyed by an electrical fire. Acquiring a used flute and a book on how to play it, he wanted to start a genre that would fuse the flute with punk rock, as Jethro Tull did for blues rock three decades prior. 2002 A Euro 2003 Just Awful? By the spring of 2002, the studio and house were rebuilt and Lieberman purchased a Korg D1616 track digital recorder. Deciding that the user's manual was too thick and a bit boring, he just plugged in and winged it and three months later, out comes his first CD Bad Alenia Rising, a greatest hits collection of the first 38 tapes. The title was the sequel of his last tape Ashes of Bad Alenia, where Bad Alenia is the homeland of his Bad Linnaim sect. Bad Alenia Rising, by its August 27, 2002 release songs from Bad Alenia Rising were known through the use of online music distributors. The largest at the time was mp3.com. His song Puppy debuted at 719 in the Garage Chart and Gangster Rabbi at 1229 on the Jewish-Israeli list on mp3.com on 62002, the first day after release. Looking for a genre that would best tolerate his new style, the progressive rock community showed least objection. In a review in their site ProgressiveWorld.net which yielded Badalania 2 out of 5 stars said the record was awful, but praised his newly learned flute work which was played over the racket of everything else and closed by saying we are fascinated by the eccentric. But. I just can't say I enjoy listening to it. Jewish Lightning, re-recording many of the post-1996 heavily Jewish theme tunes with the exception of the new Astral and Spring Green 415, Lieberman's second CD Jewish Lightning was released on September 16, 2003. This record. As Badalania, received some poor grades for listenability because of Lieberman's overuse of ethnic instruments and non conforming methods in the studio, but for the content, identifying with biblical ancestry and anger towards the Holocaust, he was dubbed a proud Israelite poet by Binyamin Bresky at Cleveland Jewish Radio. Additionally, in a tribute to Nazi hunter Simon Wiesenthal after his 2005 death, Jewish music journalist Baron Dave Rom said of Lieberman in a review of Lightning, his energy and attitude are infectious. He has something to say and by damn he's going to say it. He's as fearless as Simon Wiesenthal and just as smolderingly angry. Desert Fever Brigade The Desert Fever Brigade sessions during the spring and summer of 2003 yielded 35 songs of which 21 of the most commercial were included on the CD. The album was released on December 29, 2003. Reviewers showed the work little respect. As Adam Miko of the Daily Vault said in his review of DFB a Euro Mr. Lieberman has no control center in the brain, hence this CD sounds the way it does. After Desert Fever Brigade's release, Steve Lieberman held the number one artist spot on mp3.com or, the largest online distributor in Australia, 
for six weeks spanning December 2003 AA Euro January 2004. 2004 Euro 2005 Skinheads in My Yard Oive, Liquidatia 455, for the release of his fourth album Liquidatia 455, he was invited to promote the album by Jim Morrison at WUSB on June 9, 2004. Liquidatia charted on some college radio top 30 charts at Harvard, Montclair State, Duke University and Stanford. Jewish Riot Oi! 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 In September 2004, Lieberman traveled to Detroit, where he played, recorded and filmed a show and released the results as what would be his sixth CD and first live record called Jewish Riot Oi! 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 Released January 5, 2005, the small audience was evident by the limited applause on the recording. Journalist James McQuiston said that Lieberman should seriously consider trying to create a more live-feeling studio experience, as this is the essence of air music, free of all the unnecessary chaos that Lieberman likes to thread throughout air music. Bill Quavers, music director at KZSU Stanford University summed up Lieberman's attitude as a live performer in his review of Jewish Riot which peaked at number 41 on the station's chart, I just love how it's obvious there's like five people in the audience while this guy gives the performance of his life. After returning home from Detroit, Buttons, his beloved lab mix who had been the subject of quite a few of Lieberman's songs, had passed at 14 and one half on September 22, 2004. He played some shows in New York City including CBGB's and the Acme Underground. Author promoter Stephen Blush was promoting a Thanksgiving Eve jam on November 24, 2004 at Don Hills and was the first to book Lieberman as gangster rabbi. Arbiter at the gate, after his attempt in New York City, Lieberman hooked up with the now-defunct Long Island Music Coalition headed up by WUSB DJ Rich Hughes, who provided him with some work in clubs. When interviewed about Lieberman by Newsday in the fall of 2004, he said he first heard Lieberman on a local radio show in his car. I nearly drove into a tree, he recalls. But something about the music stuck with him. I like the way he follows his own muse. Lieberman released his fifth album, Arbiter at the Gate, on October 18, 2004. When the Olmasic Guide received its copy, because Lieberman dedicated a song The AMG to them, critic Gregory McIntosh reviewed the CD, giving it a surprising three and one half stars citing mostly, the appeal of Arbiter at the Gate, and indeed all of Lieberman's work, is the sheer and impressive fearlessness of it. Arbiter peaked at number 42 on WXDU Duke University and on May 22, 2005 hit number 87 at KZSU, and two weeks later, Jewish Riot re-entered at number 361 notch lower than Arbiter holding number 359. Jew in the Underground During the early part of 2005, Steve Lieberman frequented open mic night at a club called Muncheba in Levittown, NY. It was hosted by comedian-musician Evan Wexel who referred to Lieberman as an anti-musician. Lieberman and Wexel did a few shows together called the Jews Who Rock Tour. At the same time, Rafa Guzman, the local music reporter at Newsday, came to one of Lieberman's shows and interviewed him for the paper. The cover of the article, published on February 27, 2005, featured a full-page picture of Lieberman playing the bass and singing at the show. In the article, subtitled A Crowd of Seven referring to the poor attendance at the show, Guzman, in detail, describes the dynamics of Lieberman's stage show, then he laid down a barrage of thunderous bass notes and snarled unintelligibly in a gravelly, slurred voice. Each song also featured a wild, high-pitched flute solo, with Lieberman occasionally slapping the bass to sustain the rumbling feedback. Concluding, Guzman states that Lieberman's music is all about his emotions and his message, not his talent. Shortly after, on June 7, 2005, Lieberman released his seventh CD, Jew in the Underground. Punkafire, on Tuesday 2nd August 2005, the host signing and the artists for the open mic at the downtown recognized Lieberman from the Newsday article six months prior. Opening with Dog Park from Liquidatia 455 and closing with Punkafire 76 FX from his forthcoming album, the MC booked Lieberman to open for the Viva La Bam rock show featuring Ryan Dunn and Don Vito the next month.
Viva the Gangster Rabbi. At the Viva La Bam show at the downtown, Lieberman had stationed a portable cassette stationed at the end of the stage. He had the results mastered onto a CD which was released as Lieberman's ninth CD, called Viva the Gangster Rabbi released January 6, 2006. A new local rock magazine was released by editor Tiffany Rosano called Perpetual Toxins. She stated in the review that Lieberman is a true rocker through and through for Borrowing a bit from experimental rockers Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart, British punk rock, such as the Sex Pistols and even 80s hair Mitala. He opened up the tune Bunky on the Donkey playing the flute, giving the song a bit of a Jethro Tull sound, and said his voice was more punk styled than Billy Joe when doing his songs in the Green Day medley. 2006 A Euro 2007 Melancholia Between the Pirates, within two weeks of the Viva La Bam show. The downtown closed down, destroying Lieberman's hope to do another show there. The Munchabba, where he was a regular, closed down the week before. These events as well as the poor reception to his eighth CD Punkafer caused Lieberman to sink into depression. Punkafer has songs such as Four Hour Stiffy, Fall Out Boy Oi Oi Oi, and the title song, a tribute to the vintage DoD distortion pedal Lieberman used to create the bass sound of the CD so poorly distorted that every single smack of a bass chord is heard. Jewish Pirate, by the fall of 2005, Lieberman began to spiral downward to his worst major depressive episode in over a decade. From this, he then suffered from writer's block, being totally unable to come up with a new song. He decided to record a CD of cover tunes and donate the gross proceeds to the North Shore Animal League, where he adopted his dogs, Buttons in 1991 and Midnight Buttons in 2004. Recorded December 2005, Jewish Pirate included songs originally done by Bruce Springsteen, Green Day, Jethro Tull, The Butthole Surfers, The Dead Milkman, and The Grateful Dead amongst others, and was released on May 30, 2006 as his 10th CD. It became his first record to chart on WUSB-FM where it hit number 8 on October 27, 2006. James McQuiston of New Future magazine said of Pirate, the results are strong for that of a cover CD, and hopes Lieberman's future recordings will continue in such a direction. In February 2006, Lieberman was featured on a seven-minute clip on Cablevision News 12. However it was only played between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. on a Wednesday, to a sparse audience. Melancholia Falling, coming out from a five-month major depressive episode in the spring of 2006, Lieberman documents it in his first concept CD Melancholia Falling, his 11th CD released October 31, 2006. Sid Nathan of The Good Times magazine said of Melancholia, perhaps the most bizarre recording ever to come across my desk. Being an old-fashioned concept album as it deals with the rabbi's recent bout of depression and coming with an actual warning against suicide on the CD itself, as the main character takes his life, this is totally convoluted. Last of the Jewish Pirates, the follow-up to 2006's Jewish Pirate, another covers CD for charity, his twelfth, was released August 7, 2007. Shake the Missile Bass, on Shake the Missile Bass, his 13th CD release November 6, 2007, the opening track Public Suicide exhibits Lieberman's failing mental health. As described by the chief editor of Smother.net magazine, a heavily distorted album as is the usual Lieberman fare, he distances himself from sunshine-laden lyrics for angry words of rage, heartache, suicide and depression. Jimmy Alvarado of Razorcake.org A Euro Punk Reviews said of Missile Bass, some will undoubtedly see it as much Ballyhooner Euro unregistered trademark and little talent, others will find a uniquely genius quality in the unpolished delivery of songs like Skinheads in My Yard Oy Vey, Love at Difcon 5, and Rubbin a Euro unregistered trademark One Out for My Baby. 2008 a Euro 2009, in early 2008, complications from bipolar disorder got Steve Lieberman committed to the psychiatric ward in a local hospital. Being released in less than a week, in two months' time after that, he had returned to the stage, playing Farmingdale, New York's Crazy Donkey, where he cut himself on stage with a broken fiddle bow. Psych Ward After the experience of his confinement, Lieberman recorded his second concept album, 
his 14th CD Psych Ward, released June 8, 2008. Senior editor C. W. Ross at Indie Music Stop said the song's lyrics are a little tough to hear with talk of self-mutilation, cutting, death and suicide, but to get the point across, it's all necessary. Lieberman seems to exist to break the rules of writing, production and instrumentalization, playing a Jethro Tull style flute and lead and rhythm bass with a vengeance. Overthrow the government. When completing work on his 15th CD, Overthrow the Government, released October 15, 2008, a commercial rock radio station was having a contest for players of miscellaneous instruments. The prize was to appear on stage at Madison Square Garden with Weezer. Lieberman submitted the flute intro to one Jethro Tull and took 60.4% of the vote and got to play the garden on September 24, 2008. Lieberman has really started to fall into a groove with these last few recordings. Uh, the music that Lieberman creates may be a little hard to get into, but the honesty of this work here is something that should be lauded and commended, said New Future magazine when reviewing the album. Three months after the Weezer show, Lieberman was asked to return to the Crazy Donkey, this time to open for Andrew W.K. 2009 a Euro 2011 JDUB Records Gangster Rabbi, Diaspora A Folk Punk History of the Hebrew Nation, setting out in the fall of 2008 to do a second concept CD, Steve Lieberman took on the history of the Jewish people. Starting with the call of Abraham, going through the Old Testament to the Holocaust and finishing with Fourth Diaspora The End Time, the underlying message is that so much misfortune befell the people because of their disobedience to God's law. Finishing the record in January 2009, at the same time the Israel-Gaza crisis erupted, Lieberman closed the album with the controversial For the Children of the Gaza. In a June 2009 review in Radio Indy, Lieberman received another comparison to fellow outsider musician Wesley Willis but relying on shock and all bursts of scorching bass licks and howls of reverent fury to trace the tormented Judaic arc from pre-biblical times to the 21st century. Diaspora was Lieberman's 16th CD, released March 31, 2009. DKTATO was 17, after numerous attempts to contact JDUB Records, including sending a copy of Psych Ward in 2008 as well as inviting them to every big show he booked. In November 2009, Lieberman was contacted by the label, who invited him to sign a multi-album five-year deal. Lieberman always wanted to be on the label, as they had discovered Mattis Yahoo and worked primarily with openly Jewish acts. JDUB hosted a punk perim party called Hamanbashin in February 2010 emceed by Sarah Lewitine which Steve Lieberman opened for. Seven weeks later on April 20, 2010, JDUB Records released the digital version of DKTATO 17, being the 27th of only 35 albums released in the label's history. Lieberman visited the JDUB offices in March 2011, when they planned to release Lieberman's CD's Jewish Engineer 18 and The Rabbi is Dead during the summer of 2011 as well as a four-part documentary of his life called A Punk Life, The Gangster Rabbi Story. The video was released in four weekly segments starting on Lieberman's 53rd birthday June 21, 2011. On July 12, 2011, the night after the last installment, The Gangster Rabbi Studio was released. JDUB artists received a personal email from the chief operating officer stating that after the label's nine-year existence, JDUB Records was forced to close down citing financial reasons alone. The news went public the next day. When interviewed by Punk Torah magazine, Lieberman was asked about his plans following JDUB's closing. Lieberman quipped, I released the first 16 albums on my own and will do the same for numbers 19 through 100 plus. As for a new label, EA Euro unregistered trademark LLB 104 when that happens. Jewish Engineer 18, following the formula of DKTATO 17, Steve Lieberman produced and physically released his 18th CD Jewish Engineer 18 on July 6, 2010. When presenting the 20 song CD to JDUB for digital release, he was told the release must wait because DKTATOR was released less than three months before. The song I'm Not a White Boy hit number one on SoundClick.com alternative chart in July 2010.
and received an International Association of Independent Recording Artists IAIRA International Top Ten Award. At this time, a stay in the hospital revealed that Lieberman was suffering from a rare chronic bone marrow cancer called polycythemia vera, which progressed to the accelerated stage in the fall of 2011. 2011 My Magic Last Days, The Rabbi Is Dead Presenting his most commercial effort to JDUB Records in March 2011 and the first where Lieberman plays the six-string guitar, he was advised to trim down the 22-song CD to 12 or 13 tracks which he did. He released the 13-track CD independently on July 19, 2011 because of the demise of JDUB. After the release of Rabbi, Lieberman was diagnosed with myeloproliferative bone marrow cancer and knew he would soon be unable to perform on stage or in the studio. He put together a final door which was documented in his 20th CD My Last Rock Show, released February 7, 2012 and is working on his final album, his 21st, to be called My Magic Tragic Last Days, but has been unable to work on it due to the quick progression of the disease. The Jethro Tull slash Gangster Rabbi Connection being a long-haired male rock flutist, playing in a similar style to Ian Anderson, the connection between Steve Lieberman and British rock band Jethro Tull was established as soon as the 2002 release of Badalania Rising. It has songs entitled Ian Anderson, Punk Rock Jethro Tull Song, Jethro Tull Fantasy Camp, and I'm Jethro Tull, with the AMG. Placing Jethro Tull as a similar artist on the page of Steve Lieberman the Gangster Rabbi. This connection brought reaction to both sides of the Jethro Tull community, those who hate Lieberman and those who love him. The former is evident on one Jethro Tull cover site. A critic says this of Lieberman's covers of Tull's War Child, Up To Me, and One Brown Mouse I have no idea what drives Lieberman to release this unapproachable stuff and why he chose Jethro Tull as a target. On a site called the Jethro Tull board which is actually endorsed by Ian Anderson, there is a thread called Gangster Rabinian saying I love your innovative and original Jethro Tull related songs, and your non-Tull songs are great too, and posted the lyrics to two of Lieberman's lyrics which express hope to find a peaceful end to the Arab-Israeli conflict unholy war in the holy land, and for the children of the Gaza. Discography, studio albums, Bad Alenia Rising, Jewish Lightning, Desert Fever Brigade, Liquidatia 455, Arbiter at the Gate, Jew in the Underground, Punkafire, Jewish Pirate, Melancholia Falling, Last of the Jewish Pirates, Shake the Missile Base, Psych Ward, Overthrow the Government, Diaspora, Dictator 17, Jewish Engineer 18, the Rabbi Is Dead, My Magic Last Days, Live Albums, Jewish Riot Oi! 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 Viva the Gangster Rabbi, My Last Rock Show, Studio Cassettes, Bang the Bass Bop Mania, Bop the Referendum, Tales from the Bop Side, Bop's Own Distributor, Resurgence in the Factory No. 5 Labor No. 6 Velo Sarapta Factor No. 7, Planet Babel No. 8 Poverty No. 9 Recession No. 10 Liquidation No. 11 Yom HaShua Babel No. 12 Zionist No. 13 Tolerance No. 14, Yeru Babel The Underground Resistance No. 15 Desolation No. 16, Mishn Ha Redactor No. 17 Diaspora No. 18 TBLISI No. 19 Gangster Rabbi No. 20 Delivering the Reprimand No. 21, 57 Badalan 7 No. 22, Gemara 57 50 No. 23, Powder Keg Mshar at number 24 Slamming the Mercenary number 25, Terra Miss Abarib number 26 Bondsman number 27, Upper Desert Discourse number 28, Badalanian Public Works number 29 My Magic Last Days number 30, Y 3.451K No Problem number 31 Labored All These Years number 32 Servitorship number 33, Bop Gun 451 No. 34 The Noisy Minority No. 35 Diaspora Blast in No. 36 Fire Sale Box Set No. 37, Ashes of Badalania No. 38 Public Kennel Wagging No. 39, Live Cassettes, Mission of Tolerance 5755, Ministering the Bad Linaim, Berlin 3451, Videos, The DKTATO Live March 20, 2010, Wish You Were Here. Dog Park April 14, 2008, Star Spangled Banner on Four String Bass, 
gangster rabbi live in Detroit, punk rock Memorial Day on Octobus May 30, 2011, gear, live stage gear, custom two-headed Octobus, 2016 nuclear green zone bus, Marshall MG30 guitar amp Y connected with, Galleon Kruger backline 112 bass amp, Armstrong model. 1042H curve headed flute, Yamaha DD9 drum machine, various recorders and whistles, studio gear, 2001 generic precision bass, 2002 Korg D1600 multi track recorder, 2010 Grizzly 6 string electric guitar, 2004 Shure SM58 microphone, Yamaha DD9 and DD6 drum machines, 1911 con trombone, recorders tenor, alto and soprano, Honor 32F Melodica, 1995 DoD Punkifier Pedal FX76, 2011 Delta Lab Metal Distortion Pedal, 2003 DD50 DoD Effects Processor, 2004 DoD Bus, Overdrive FX92, Various Concert Flutes, External Links, GangsterRabbi.com A Euro The Official Steve Lieberman Website, Steve Lieberman The Gangster Rabbi on Facebook, Page for Steve Lieberman, the Gangster Rabbi on Las FM, references.